Welcome to episode 120, 10 Style Tips from French Women. French women are known for their impeccable style, but what is it that makes their style so memorable? Watching French women on my recent trip to Paris gave me some great insight into this question, and now I'm sharing these tips with you. While the French mystique is real, these tips may surprise you and how easy they can be to add to your own personal style. Let's go cultivate your very own je ne sais quoi. But first... Have you ever wondered why some women seem to have style while others seem to struggle? Well, in my experience as a master style coach, I've discovered that there are five elements to style. And when you know them, you can master your style with ease. I've created a free download just for you all around the five elements of style that, in my opinion, all women must know before getting dressed. In this download, you'll discover exactly what you need to know, what you need to focus on, and how it all works together. We believe that when you look great, you feel great. And when you feel great, anything is possible. So go grab this free download and get ready to dress like you mean it. You can find it at shopstylefinder.com. The link is in the show notes. Welcome to Style by Mary Michelle, a podcast designed to empower you through personal style. I'm your host, Mary Michelle Nidefer, a master style coach, founder of Style Finder Boutique, and creator of the Style Finder ID system. I'm here to help you know what to wear, how to wear it, and how to get dressed in seven minutes or less. Let's go. Bonjour from Paris. I am recording this podcast from my hotel room in Paris and wanted to go ahead and just share all the fabulous tips that I've gotten from Parisian women. These women, I tell you what, they know how to dress and it has been just a true delight to sit at a cafe and sip a glass of wine or just walk down the streets and see what women wear. And by women, I mean women of all ages, including teens into probably, I don't know, late 80s, early 90s. These women have style. And there is so much that I think we can take from their style and apply it to our own. In many ways, in looking at the women on the streets of Paris, honestly, from a day-to-day perspective, there's not a drastic difference in how they dress. In fact, I could look at a Parisian woman, and a lot of women are wearing things that I see women in the U.S. wearing, but there are differences, and I'm going to share with you what those differences are and some things that I think we could apply to our own style to either take it up a notch or take it down a notch because, well, Paris. My first tip, a natural approach. Now, What I have noticed most about the women in France is their outfits are impeccable. The clothes all fit well, they're well paired, they work for their body type. But what I have seen is even with women who were very dressed up, their hair and their makeup are very understated. I've seen many women of all ages with hair that is just what I would describe as being very natural, very natural brows, very natural makeup, if any. In fact, I read the Metro yesterday and sat across from two women who were probably about my age, and they both had very, very natural hair. They both wore little to no makeup, and they looked great. They had great style. They presented themselves well, but it was just a a very different perspective. And what was interesting was we went to Versailles yesterday, and it was incredible. The palace was fabulous, but we spent a lot of time on the grounds, touring the parks, down by the canal. And what I noticed, again, was a very natural approach. Now, the gardens at Versailles were very stylized, were very manicured, were very intentional. But down by the canal, in the parks, the parks were beautiful, but they were very, very simple. There was little to no landscaping. Not that it didn't look nice, but it was not 
what we would typically see in the U.S. And I thought that was really interesting, given the just over-the-top, very Rococo design of Versailles, that it would be contrasted with this very simple, very natural approach to landscaping. But I think that just ties in with the Parisian aesthetic. I think natural here is a word that carries over from the food. You see a lot of the wine that's very natural, doesn't have a lot of additives, doesn't have a lot of sugar. A lot of the food is a little bit more natural. They eat locally. I think a natural approach is really what I would come to describe as the French way. And so it's no accident that French women take a more natural approach when it comes to your style. And I have to say that really resonates with me because I like things that are a little bit more understated rather than overdone. I don't like a lot of makeup. I don't like to fuss with my hair and feel like I have to style it and spray it and leave it. Now, if that's your style, you go for it. This is all about you. You do you. But my own personal preference, I think, ties in more with the French aesthetic, and that's wearing clothes that are well-fitting, that are very nice, but a little bit more of a natural approach when it comes to hair and makeup. Now, the other thing I will say that is a very natural approach is a lot of French women don't wear a bra, and they don't make any qualms about it. It's just a very natural way of being. Now, that, that is highly contrasted with the French are known for their lingerie and very, not just any lingerie, but over the top lingerie, like really, really beautiful, nice lingerie. But a lot of French women of all ages just don't wear a bra. And it's, it's perfectly fine. I have yet to see a woman that was not wearing one that was not appropriate. And so I think there is just this level of, and I'm reluctant to use the word appropriate, but I'm not sure what else to use, but it's just this level of understated, it's, it, it's appropriate, it, there's nothing um, just overdone about it. They're not showing anything off, it's just very understated, it's just very natural, as if that's just how things are meant to be. And I appreciate that. I think so, so many times in the media, in celebrities, you can see things that are very inappropriate. But I think in the French culture, you see women who are just being themselves and they don't make any qualms about it. But it's certainly not flashy. It's not trashy. And it's, it's done in a very tasteful way. I think that's, that's a better way to put it, tasteful rather than appropriate. I think being a parent, we learn, you know, what's appropriate, right? We learn what's not appropriate. And I think maybe we should eliminate that word from from our vocabulary and think about what's more tasteful instead. All right, number two, keep it simple. I think this ties in a little bit with number one. But what I found is that French women do dress well, but they keep it unfussy. They will put their outfit together. They will have all the necessary accessories, the belts, the scarves, the details, but it's unfussy. There is nothing stuffy about their look. There is nothing overdone. It's just very, very simple. Again, it's very, very understated. I think French, it's interesting because I think, you know, in France, especially in Paris. Paris is one of the fashion capitals. And if you think back to, say, the 1940s and Christian Dior and the new look came out, that was just very, very different from what women had been wearing. And it just really transformed things. But I think things have really shifted to be, you know, not everything is quite so fitted. Not everything is quite so fussy. It's just very simple. It's done well, kind of like their food. It's done well, but it's very, very simple. Think about the French food. I think 
their food is is exquisite. But what does it consist of? Fresh, local ingredients. A lot of them are not over-prepared. It's very simple. But it's the quality of the ingredients. And it's how they put it together. A lot of French dishes... I mean, some French dishes have a lot of ingredients. But a lot of wonderful French dishes have very simple ingredients. And so the quality matters. And it's done in a very, very simple way. But it tastes amazing. It's the combination. They just know how to put things together. Number three, comfort. You would not believe how many sneakers I see here. And probably more so than I see in the U.S. Probably because it's a city. Probably, I mean, I live in Raleigh, which, you know, it is a city, but we don't walk everywhere. In Paris, you walk everywhere. You, or you take the bus or you take the metro, but typically you're doing a lot of walking. Comfort is key. And I see women of all ages rocking their sneakers, rocking their comfort shoes, rocking their, you know, whatever shoes keep them comfortable. Comfort is key. And I think this ties in with, with number two, with keeping it simple. There, there's, I don't see French women wearing anything that looks uncomfortable. They're dressing for their lifestyle. And fabrics are key. Shoot footwear especially is key if you're going to be doing a lot of walking. Fortunately, the shoes I brought with me are very comfortable and allow me to do a lot of walking. I brought, actually I brought four pairs of shoes, but really like two key shoes, a gray pair of sneakers. I brought my platform Pumas, my white, big white sneakers, which (laughs) I've seen big white sneakers all over Paris. And then I brought my um, sandals that are reversible. And if you've seen my pictures, you've noticed I've got on black sandals in some pictures, and then I've got on sandals that are black, but then they have a little bit of tan and a little bit of metallic. They are reversible. And I love these shoes. I have worn them the past two days. I have walked 10,000 steps or more in a day in these shoes. And they're phenomenal. In fact, it was funny because yesterday on our bike tour, uh, one of the girls asked me, we were talking about what we do, and I told her I was a style coach, and she's like, oh, so that explains it. That explains the shoes. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, everybody else has on sneakers. You don't have on sneakers. And I said, well, I'm wearing these sandals, but they're just, actually, these are probably more comfortable than my sneakers were. And I told her that, and she was like, really? Because they don't look comfortable. I'm like, I, I, girl, trust me, I, I would not be wearing these on a bike tour and to walk for hours around Versailles if they were not. I do not sacrifice function for fashion, which brings me to number four, function over fashion. French women don't either. They buy pieces that are not overdone, that are perfect for their lifestyle and that have great performance. French women want function, but they want the fashion and they don't settle. I think there's a common misconception, at least in the U.S., with a lot of the women that I talk to that think, well, if I want comfort, it, it's not going to look good. If I want to dress comfortably or have comfortable footwear, it's not going to look good. And ladies, let me tell you, in this day and age, and I've been preaching this for quite a while, because of the advent in technology, because there are so many women and designers out there who want to be comfortable but don't want to sacrifice. You don't have to sacrifice anything. Style, comfort, you can have it all. Truly. You can have it all. You could be wearing a suit in your sneakers. You could be wearing a suit made of ponte knit that stretches and feels like you're wearing your yoga pants. And then you've got on your sneakers and you know what? You're dressed to the nines. Don't sacrifice anything for comfort. Don't sacrifice anything for style. The two are not mutually exclusive. Now you choose whichever one is more important to you. But just know that you can easily have both. All right, number five, don't be afraid of color. I have seen some of the most interesting color combinations, some of the most interesting ways of wearing color, even just in the two days I've been here. And what I've seen is that French women are not afraid to wear color. 
I saw a woman yesterday. Her outfit was very simple. She had on a pair of natural wide leg pants. I'm seeing wide leg pants everywhere. Not jeans, mind you, just wide leg pants. Jeans, I've seen really skinny jeans, maybe some straight legs, and a few flares or a few boot cuts, but primarily skinnies, which is interesting. But I tell you what, if pants, I'm seeing nothing but wide legs. But I saw a woman, when I was in the metro, she was wearing a great pair of natural wide leg pants, And she had paired it with a, I think it was a tube top or it was a very slim fitting, um, a very slim fitting tank top in a sort of an ochre slash olive green color, very hard color for some people to wear. It's certainly not my color, but she had warm coloring. She knew her color, her colors, obviously. And that was the one shot of color and it tied in beautifully. It was not a lot of color because her tank top was very slim, slim fitting, uh, skimpy. Skimpy is not the right word, but it wasn't like overdone. It wasn't a lot of color. It was just a little bit of color. And then she paired it with these natural colored pants and it worked really well with her personal coloring. But it was just a, just a little bit. But I thought, wow, that's, that's a bold choice of color. Obviously, she knew what colors worked for her, and then she balanced it out with these natural colored pants, so it wasn't overdone. It was just one pop of color. I've seen a lot of women wearing flowy silk print pants, and when I say print, like bold prints, bold, a lot of florals, a lot of florals, a few modern prints, but they're fairly bold. A few graphic prints. They're not wallflowers. They're not, but they're, yeah, at the same time, they're not overwhelming. They're not overdone. It's like they're just, they're nice. They're a nice focal point. And then it just works with their outfit. But you can tell they're wearing this color and they're wearing it with confidence. One thing I've also seen that I love, I've seen a lot of muted tones. I've seen several women. I saw a woman the other day when I was going to dinner, and she was wearing multiple shades of muted tones that created almost like a gradient look, and it was so spot on. It tied in with her hair color, and then she had brought in a few other shades that were similar, and so it wasn't... It, it was all colors that just flowed and just worked together beautifully. And I have seen a lot of women wearing more muted shades, more monochromatic shades. But then I've also seen women wearing bold pops of color, but bold not in over-the-top ways, but bold in that, oh, it's it makes a statement, it stands out, it's but it's the right color. These women obviously know their colors. They know what colors work for them and they wear those colors with confidence. Number six, buy quality, not trend. Now what I mean by that, it doesn't mean don't keep your look up. It doesn't mean don't bring your look up to speed. It doesn't mean don't pay attention to the trends. What it does mean is French women invest in quality wardrobe staples. They build their core wardrobe around key pieces, a really beautiful pair of jeans, a really gorgeous white blouse, a really beautiful pleated skirt. I've seen a lot of pleated skirts here. That is definitely a hot trend. But what's interesting to me, I look at a pleated skirt and think, well, it it's obviously it's a popular piece right now. It's on trend, but it's a classic. And so when you invest in pieces like that, when they come back around, you've already got it in your closet. But guess what? Even if it doesn't come back around, it's still a classic, so you can still pull it out. Your black palazzo pants or your floral palazzo pants, those are on trend right now, obviously. So you can buy a really nice pair and invest in those. But just know that even if they're not 
on trend next season, you can still wear those. They're they're kind of a classic. There are a lot of things that can be considered classics or, as I like to say, if it's your style, like if it's something that you put on and you're like, oh my gosh, I love this, then it becomes your signature item. If it's something that maybe is on trend and you think, oh my gosh, I need this in my closet forever, I'm never going to not wear this, invest in that. Liquid leather jackets are something that I've seen so many of our clients invest in. And certainly I have over the years because when I put them on, I'm like, oh my God, like I want one of these in every color. And I know, sure, it's $200 a pop, but it's $200 that I know I'm going to get my money's worth out of. And I'd much rather pay that and have a jacket I'm going to have for years to come that I can throw in the washer, by the way, than... How, and something that feels so good on it, it just, I, you know, I can't tell you, I mean, I think I brought four of those, four of my liquid leather jackets with me on this trip and I'm only here for a week, but I'm like, you know what? I, I can wear those. I can mix and match. They change the look of my outfits and I just, I love them so much. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to not bring them, but I know that I'm going to wear those and I know that I will get my money's worth and I know they're going to last. And so yeah, that's something it, it is. Motorcycle jackets are on trend right now, but they're also a classic. We've been buying those things for seven years since we opened the boutique, and <laughs> they have never gone out of style. And they won't. A motorcycle jacket is a classic you can invest in. And you can know even next year if it's not on the, the hot list, pull it out. It's still going to be just fine. Number seven, know your style. French women know their style. And I've seen a lot of variations. I think you hear so, so many women talk about the French style. And although there is, I will say that there is kind of a classic French look, there are also a million different variations. These women know their style. And as I mentioned earlier with color, they know the colors that work for them. They know the cuts for their body type. I see so many women wearing well-fitting clothes. So many more than I see in the U.S. And it's not... Any, I mean, it's... I think, I think French women have far fewer hang-ups about their bodies than American women do. Speaking from someone who has had a lot of hang-ups about my own body, you know, I see that these women are, you know, wearing crop tops or they're wearing things that show their body and it's just very natural. It's like, okay, this is my body. Let me wear this and let me go eat the big bowl of pasta or the big chunk of bread and not have any issues with it. I love that. And I wish that we had more of that in our culture. But French women really know their style. Seeing the colors, seeing the fit, seeing how they express themselves, how they tie their scarves, the handbags they carry. The It's interesting because I've seen so many women carrying exquisite handbags that are in the right scale for them. They know. It's like, I, I don't know if it's just in their DNA. It's just taught more. It's, it's just, I don't know. It's hard to explain, but... I've just seen so many women who look pulled together, put together. It's as if they had a stylist. My opinion is they're probably just taught these things from an early age. I think it's inherent in their culture. Whereas I think in the U.S., it, it's, it's different. It's just very different. Not that style isn't inherent in our culture, but I think a lot of women are not taught how to build a wardrobe. They're not taught about the right colors. They're not taught to shop for their body type. I think in the U.S., oftentimes there is this misnomer of a one-size-fits-all approach. And I think in France, there's more of an individual approach. And that becomes clear in, in what I've seen on the streets. Number eight, one focal point. What I've noticed is that, you know, going back to keeping it natural, keeping it simple. French women often have one focal point 
of their outfit. They don't have a lot of different things that compete. They don't have a lot of things going on. I have not seen a lot of layering with jewelry. I have seen maybe one beautiful necklace and maybe no earrings. I've seen one bold pop pop of color. Not a lot of color blocking or mixing colors. One bold print paired with a very understated blouse. Maybe a white blouse. Maybe a white t-shirt. One thing takes center stage. And I, I love that. I think having one focal point, it's not a lot of overstatement. It's very simple. It's kind of like that, um, you know, I've talked about this before. I grew up reading the official preppy handbook. That was like my, my style Bible. And when I was in my teens, and I remember one piece of advice, which I, I still use that now, but one piece of advice is get fully dressed and then take off one piece of jewelry. It's like you'd rather be a little bit understated than overstated. And I think that is very much the French aesthetic. One focal point. Let the pants take center stage or let your top take center stage or maybe it's your shoes or your handbag or your scarf. Maybe it's jeans and a white t-shirt with a beautiful scarf. I have seen a lot of French women wearing a gorgeous white button-down blouse and a great fitting pair of jeans and then some cute shoes, whether it's sneakers or loafers. But you know what? I saw a woman in Raleigh the other day going into the coffee shop wearing a fabulous white blouse and a great fitting pair of wide leg jeans and some gorgeous black loafers. And I looked at her and I thought, you know what? You you look French. You look like you have this great style, even though it's very, very understated. And I thought, how interesting. That's kind of a universal look. But it's I think the French have become known for that look. But U.S. women, we have a lot more going for us than we give ourselves credit for. And women around the world, I can't speak to your style yet because I I need to do more traveling. And I plan to. So, <laughs> so give yourself credit. Just because I don't mention it on here does not mean you don't have great style. You do. We all have great style. I think it just takes some time to cultivate it and to really kind of you know come into our own when it comes to our style. Number nine, you're never too old. You are never too old. I see French women of all ages rocking things. And again, we're going to go back to that word appropriate. I'm not really going to use the word age appropriate because I don't really feel like that's the right word. That's the right phrase to use. And I have used that before. I've used it as a mother, as a stepmother. And I am going to eliminate that from my my vocabulary, appropriate, because I feel like with appropriate, there's a lot of judgment, and I don't like that word. I have come to realize that's not the right word. Tasteful is a much better word. And French women, I believe, I have seen women, some older women, wearing some things that I thought, wow. That looks great on her. I saw someone last night going to dinner and she was wearing, she was probably, she was at least in her 40s and she was wearing a very, very, very short jean skirt. But what I've seen, I've seen these skirts, it's almost like a hybrid of a skirt and shorts. They're very short shorts with a, like an apron front almost. And so it's, it's a skirt technically, but then it's got shorts underneath but I saw a woman in her 40s, uh, so I thought, uh, wearing the, this short skirt hybrid, and it was acid washed. Something that looked like it would be very, very trendy. She looked great in it. She had it styled with a black top, some cute black shoes, a blazer. She looked great. It was very tasteful on her. That is something that not everybody can wear, but it worked for her body type. It worked for her style, and she looked very comfortable in it. So I've seen a lot of things like that that would normally be younger, more trendy. But it just worked. And so I think French women don't think about their age as much as they do the other elements, which is what I teach. So I I encourage you, eliminate age appropriate from your vocabulary. If it works for your body type, if it works for your coloring, if it works for your style, why not wear it? 
why get caught up in the age-appropriate label? Because in my opinion, it doesn't really apply. Age-appropriate could certainly imply something is more matronly. Well, you know, like I was reading something the other day. It's like, well, you're over a certain age. You should just, you know, cut your hair short, get a perm, and start wearing really boxy, shapeless clothing. No, we're, we're not here to do that. doesn't make anybody feel good, unless that's truly what you want to do. But this is where there are no shoulds. There are only musts, and the musts are the ones that you know are true for you. All right, number 10, have fun. Have fun with your style. I've seen so many women do things in playful, unexpected ways that, huh, I wouldn't have thought to do that. That's, that's what I love. That's where I feel like the unique personal style really, really comes in. It's unexpected. It's fun. It's whimsical. It's playful. It's just that little little thing, that one little thing. Maybe it's the focal point. Maybe it's a print. Maybe it's the way they mix pattern and color. Maybe it's the way they tuck their white blouse in. Or maybe it's the way they did their hair or probably not their makeup. I really have not seen a lot of women wearing makeup here, which is fascinating to me Um, because that, you know, I, and I think, you know, just the day or so I've been here, I'm like, okay, maybe I won't do eyeshadow today. Maybe I won't wear eyeliner. Maybe I will keep it simple. I, I did wear uh, foundation yesterday. I might not wear it today. So we'll see. But have fun with your look, whatever it is. And I think that's, that's something we can all incorporate. These lessons are all things that we can incorporate into our own style. I think the French aesthetic, if I had to use two words to describe it, I would say very natural and very intuitive, natural and intuitive. They're working with what they have and they're feeling their way through it. What feels right? Does this color feel right? Does this shape feel right? Cut, color, etc. Print, size of purse, etc. All all the things, does it feel right? And that's what I, I coach all of you to do. Ask yourself, how does it make me feel? Do you feel overdone or do you feel just right? trust that does it feel like it's do i feel like it's appropriate for me which again we're we're going to ditch that word does it does it feel tasteful trust that does it feel good to me does it feel like this is something i want to wear do i feel more more myself do i feel more myself when i wear this trust that because when you can have fun and relax into it that's where the confidence comes in. You're never dictated to. This fashion is fashion and style are not about being dictated to. It's about understanding who you are and and expressing that through your clothes for all the world to see. And when it's right, you know it, and you're really the only person that knows it. Although I will say is a good style coach will know it. She'll she'll recognize that in you. She'll guide you. But I know I've seen my clients a million times when they put something on and it's like, oh, ah, like the, just the floodgates open, the, the heavens open up, like, oh my gosh, I've discovered a side of myself I never knew was there. I can see that look in my client's eyes, that aha moment. And it's not about the thing. It's not about the jacket or the shoes or the dress or the combination. It's about who they become, who you become in your clothes. When what you see in the mirror matches who you know you are on the inside, that's where the magic happens. And that's what I see in French and many French women, not all French women, but in many French women. It's two words that are inscribed at the, what is it? The temple at the Apollo at Delphi. I probably totally got that wrong. Um, Know thyself. Know thyself. And when you know yourself, then you can express that from the inside out. Just be you. I think that's the biggest thing that I can see in French women. They're just being who they are. They're not trying to be something they're not. You know, everybody talks about that je ne sais quoi, that certain something. That certain something is the essence of who you are. When you can express that, the people it's something people can't put their finger on. 
but it's the essence of who you are. It's when the inside and the outside connect. That's the magic. That's the je ne sais quoi. And that's something that money can't buy. It has to be cultivated. And it starts with knowing who you are and knowing what's right for you. All right, let me go through those again. My first tip, a natural approach. Number two, keep it simple. Number three, comfort. Number four, function and fashion. Number five, don't be afraid of color. Number six, buy quality. Number seven, know your style. I'm going to add know yourself. Number eight, one focal point. Number nine, you're never too old. And number 10, have fun. All right, ladies, I hope you love these. I hope you loved learning about, uh, you know, just hearing about some of my adventures and learning about my um, my outlook, my, my take on French style and how you can bring that into your own style to cultivate your own sense of style. It's really all about you. I hope you feel beautiful today because you already are. I love you, ladies. I will see you on the next episode. Thanks for tuning in to Style by Mary Michelle, where women come to get dressed in seven minutes or less. If you enjoyed this podcast, I invite you to leave me a five-star review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Style by Mary Michelle and shop our boutique at shopstylefinder.com for the best in upscale casual apparel. Better yet, if you're in the Raleigh area, come see us. We're located in the North Hills Shopping Center, the premier shopping district in Midtown Raleigh. For details and links mentioned in this episode, be sure to see the show notes. Have a beautiful week.